Hey, what's up, Switz? I'm Old Salty Sean, aka Dalron Telvani, and welcome to the first in our deck tech series covering how to play every single deck in Tales of Tribute. We're actually going to be starting with the final two decks that you unlock Red Eagle and Sorcerer King Orgnum. Even if you don't have these two tribute decks unlocked yet, you're likely to see them as you climb the ladder, so knowing how to play with them and against them can be crucial information that you won't want to pass up. Before we get started, one quick note on the last few tribute videos. I was trying to refer to each deck by its color for ease of speech and thought it would be easier to follow along when you were looking at the visual color of each deck. However, some viewers pointed out how problematic this is for the colorblind. A thousand apologies to anybody that this negatively impacted, I'll be referring to the decks by their name going forward. With that out of the way, let's jump right into a quick synopsis of how these two decks play, starting with my favorite deck in the game, Red Eagle. The Red Eagle deck requires you to hit rank 7 in the Tales of Tribute skill line and complete the entire Tales of Tribute quest line, so prepare for a bit of a grind if you don't already have this one unlocked. Red Eagle's deck gives you plentiful access to the most powerful ability in all of deck building games, deleting cards. For those of you who are new to deck builders, you may be asking why you'd ever want to remove cards from your deck. Since we shuffle our discard pile back into our deck whenever we run out of cards, getting rid of our very weak starting cards means that we'll draw into our power cards more frequently. For example, if your opponent allows you to delete a lot of your basic cards and you're building around the Duke of Crows deck, utilizing its card draw potential you can potentially play your entire deck every turn, and yes, this does happen. Card deletion isn't the only tool in Red Eagle's deck, it's also very good at power game. Cards like Midnight Raid can provide great power for relatively low cost, while cards like Bloody Sacrifice or Bloody Offering give you power while also destroying cards. More importantly, none of the Red Eagle cards have a higher combo than 2, meaning that you don't need to build around them, making them great flex deck options. Lastly, Red Eagle's patron power allows you to draw an extra card at the cost of 2 power. This might seem insignificant, but it can be potentially devastating, allowing you to gain more gold for a power buy on the turn that you need it, or giving you more combo card draw, say with the Duke of Crows deck. When using this patron power, always hover over your remaining deck as it's very important to consider the odds of what you might be potentially drawing into. Again, if the odds are good of enabling a combo, it should definitely be used, or if the price will pay for itself. For example, 2 power is a low price to pay if it means drawing into a rally and gaining 7 power back. For decks to bring alongside Red Eagle, consider the aforementioned Duke of Crows if picking first, as the card draw coupled with card deletion is very powerful together. Red Eagle also works great with St. Pelin. A lot of players complain about the turn 1 armory buy. Now see them get even angrier when you draw into armory every single turn. Countering Red Eagle is best done with our friend Rogine. Rogine is a deck that a lot of people tend to sleep on, but if you notice that your opponent is utilizing a lot of card deletion, Rogine is great for padding their deck back out. Even if they use the treasury to delete the curse, the treasury writ is still polluting their deck from what they wanted to do. Secondly, make sure you are absolutely sure you are destroying Red Eagle's agents. They're generally quite low health, but if given the chance, they'll delete half of the opponent's deck before you can even realize it. We move on then from my favorite deck to my most hated deck. Sorcerer King Orgnum might be the most frustrating deck ever added to Tribute. It's not that it's too powerful, it's just that it generally overtakes the entire game. Most decks will generally synergize in strange and interesting ways, but when someone brings Orgnum to the table, the game becomes about Orgnum. Again, don't get it twisted, I don't think that Orgnum needs nerfing. In fact, I actually think he's a fairly weak deck. First, we'll cover how to actually unlock Orgnum. You're going to need to max out your Tales of Tribute skill line all the way up to level 8. Then you're going to venture far and wide across Tamriel and play all 5 founders of Tales of Tribute. While you can play some of these patrons before you hit level 8, you'll need level 8 and all the other decks in order to play against all of them, and you'll need all 5 of them to create the deck. So what makes Sort King such a meta warping deck? It primarily comes down to the patron power, which can quickly snowball and get out of control. Organum has different patron abilities at each phase of its dial, each costing you 3 gold. When you're unfavored, it gives you 2 power, that's it. At neutral, it gives you 1 power for every 6 cards in your deck, rounded down. Keep in mind that the starting deck size is 10. At the favored status, you'll be gaining 1 power for every 4 cards in your deck and adding a Maromur boarding party to your deck. Boarding party is a pretty basic card that simply adds 2 prestige to your pool. It's important to note, however, this is prestige, not power, meaning that it can't be used to kill agents, and it will ignore the ability of taunt. So why is this so frustrating? Well, it quickly becomes a tug-of-war between the two players for Orgnum's favor, and the rest of the deck tends not to matter. 
One player really can't afford to let Orgnum snowball, however it is a bit balanced by the unfavored party gaining more power than the favored party when activating the patron in the early game. The disparity in power can be really frustrating to deal with if you don't know how to counter him. So if he's this powerful, why did I say that he doesn't need a nerf? Well for one, building around Orgnum's patron power is actually a very inconsistent win condition. It's very frequently a coin flip whether or not the dependability offered by his patron ability beats out what's on offer in the tavern. It's very important to note that Orgnum players tend to not buy anything from the tavern as all their gold is going towards Orgnum and never the treasury. This means they're generally dealing with the starting deck for the entire game plus some freebooters, meaning that they'll likely be outpaced by the end of the game despite a strong start. Taking it a step further, I spoke with my fellow ESO University tribute professor, Pink Apple, about what they thought works best against Orgnum. Pink Apple turned me on just how effective Regine is as absolute kryptonite for Orgnum for two really strong reasons. First of all, Orgnum players have to keep using the patron power each turn, meaning that they're never interacting with the treasury. This means that they're likely never destroying befuddlement cards from Regine's patron power. Crucially, Orgnum requires 3 gold to use each turn, meaning that if there's ever a turn where our opponent isn't able to afford to activate him, they are in very rough shape. If a game goes long enough, it's not unlikely to see Orgnum players losing 3 of their cards from their hand due to curses. Secondly, Regine's agents are the perfect counter to Orgnum's patron power. Being high health with generally low cost while also removing prestige from our opponent counters their prestige gain. If you manage to buy a pair of Stubborn Shadows and get them both on the field, you've got a power 6 shield and your opponent is losing out on 4 prestige each turn and it's basically sealed up from there. We haven't even talked about what the actual deck for Organum provides because it's so inconsequential to most Organum players win condition. Most of the deck consists of relatively low cost action cards with combo 2 or 3, some of which give you prestige rather than power. These are actually fairly cheap and decent access to power. However, most Orgnum players tend to just completely overlook them in order to spam the patron power as much as possible. So if you're dead set on playing as Orgnum, first of all, how dare you? Secondly, you'll want to consider pairing it with a deck such as Hoon Ding. The extra gold from his patron ability tends to help offset the price you'll be paying each turn to use Orgnum's patron power. The other really strong choice is to utilize the extra economy generated from using Klaalu. While it may seem tempting to go for the early Orgnum activation, you'll actually want to wait until you've picked up a few economy cards to pad out your deck and make sure you're getting the most out of his patron ability. The player who uses Orgnum's patron power first generally comes out behind in the early tug of war due to the deck size wording of his neutral ability. Buying those extra cheap economy cards will help inflate your deck, meaning more power for you when the tug of war begins. Winning with Orgnum against experienced opponents who know how to deal with him will require a careful understanding of when to begin using the patron spam. Going for it right out of the gate isn't likely to gain you many Rubidite ranks. And that about covers it. I hope you've enjoyed this first deck deep dive. I'll plan to cover the other 6 decks in time, but I wanted to get this one out now for new players who might not have the final 2 decks yet and are struggling against them. Next week's upload will be more tribute games with commentary since I got a good response from people the last time we did that. One last note, I mentioned my fellow ESOU professor Pink Apple in this video. They are usually in the number one spot on the PCNA Tribute leaderboards, and they have just recently started a YouTube channel where they're doing tier lists of all the cards in Tales of Tribute. Go watch their videos and subscribe to them if you want some true big brain strategies and commentary on how to play Tribute. I'll put a link in the description. But until we meet again on the plains of Vardenfell, I've been Old Salty Sean saying smoke skooma and worship Daedra. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. <laughs>